All right, guys, we are going to start our first lecture on physics 112. My name is Ken Maumong. <coughs> and we are going to start from chapter 18 of our textbook. And we are going to be talk about <coughs> going to be talking about electric charges in nature and also we'll talk about electrostatic forces and also <coughs> we'll talk about electric fields and then we'll need to know how to add these forces and electric fields to find something called resultant forces or resultant fields. So in order to do that, we need to know how to add vectors. All right. So what are vectors? Vectors, <coughs> actually, it is, you should already know about this from part one of this book, but I'm going to review it a little bit so that you will not be totally lost. All right. Now, if you have questions, then note it down and you can send me email or you can just call me on <coughs> uh, what you call in my <coughs> office hours, during my office hours. OK. Now, what are vectors? Vectors are some quantities that has both magnitude and direction. That is magnitude and direction. So we will represent vectors by arrows. The length of the arrow will represent the magnitude of this vector and of course the arrowhead will show you the direction of this vector. So let's suppose this vector A then the magnitude is given by this vector. We'll write it as A without the bar or sometimes we'll write like this. All right, And the direction is given by the direction of the arrowhead. Now, why do we need add, why do we need to know how to add vectors? Think about this. Let's suppose you have an object. I'm drawing a little dot, and two people are pulling on this. One in this direction with let's say force F1. So I write a vector F1, and then another one in this direction different magnitude and different direction, force F2. Then where will it go with how much resultant force on it? Well, <coughs> it will go somewhere in between, we know that. And there is a rule or a way to find out exactly where it will go and how much the magnitude would be. And that is called parallelogram rule or parallel parallelogram law, right? What you do is you draw one parallel to this base one and then you draw another one parallel to this one then you get a parallelogram. Then you connect from here to here. That is, you draw a line along this diagonal. And that will be your resultant force F. And we write that the resultant force F is vector F1 plus vector F2. Obviously, in general, unless this and this are aligned together, the magnitude F, sometimes we write F without a bar, or sometimes we will write like this, is obviously not equal to magnitude of F1 plus magnitude of F2. Okay? In general, it will not be the same. All right? And then we can also find in what direction it will go, we can find this angle. But we are not going to do that way. It's a long way to do this simple little problem. So what we are going to do is we will learn how to add vectors 
in a different way. And in order to do that, first it looks like it's complicated, but actually once you know it, it's very, very simple. It is called vector decomposition. So what is vector decomposition? That is, when you have a vector, then you <coughs> decompose it into two different vectors, right? So the original vector is gone. For example, look at this. This f1 and f2, we I told you when we add them up, we'll get this resultant vector. That means this resultant vector is the same equivalent to the result of f1 and f2. That means I can decompose this vector f into f1 and f2. But that doesn't help anything because the angle is a little bit awkward. But the thing is, I can always decompose a vector into two perpendicular components. What do I mean by, by that? Let me see this is an xy plane. And you have a vector in some general direction. Let's call it A. Right? And this is your x-axis, this is your y-axis. Then I can decompose this vector A into a vector AX and a vector AY. It's exactly the same as above, but the thing is this time I am decomposing this vector into two perpendicular components. What's the advantage of it? Because then we can use <coughs> the Pythagorean theorem and we can use all kinds of neat trigonometric identities. Here, this is a little bit awkward because the, angles are not, the angle is not 90 here. So here, this angle is 90, so I can take advantage of that. And we still write vector A is vector AX plus vector AY. Obviously, the magnitude of A is not the same as magnitude of AX plus magnitude of AY. Now, let's suppose the angle of this vector A and the x-axis is, let's call it theta. Then, I can see that AX, the magnitude of A vector AX, this length is actually magnitude of A times cosine theta. Similarly, I can write Ay is equal to magnitude of A times sine theta. Right? And if you are not sure why, then you can see that this length is Ay, this length is Ax. So, Ay, this is magnitude of Ay, this is magnitude of Ax, Ay divided by Ax which is equal to tangent theta. So you see Ay divided by Ax is tangent theta. Or you can say that theta is equal to tangent inverse Ay by Ax. From this little triangle, you can see that this is the magnitude of A, so Ax divided by A is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, so it will be cosine, and then Ay, the opposite of the to the angle, the one facing the angle, Ay divided by hypotenuse A, that will give you sine theta. Right? Okay? And then, again, magnitude of A, vector A, I can write like this, or I can write that, is equal to square root of ax squared plus ay squared. That comes from Pythagorean theorem. So you know all of these things. Okay? So now that's what you call the vector decomposition. So how can we use that vector decomposition? Well, <coughs> the way we use is, let's suppose I have two vectors. Let's suppose I have vector A, and then I'll be fancy, I'll use another color. I'll have vector B. So this is vector A, and this is vector B. 
Now, as I mentioned before, I can decompose this vector A into two parts. I can decompose it into AX and AY. So I can decompose it into AX and AY. Similarly, I can do the same thing for B. B will be decomposed into BX and BY. Obviously, AX plus AY, factor AX plus AY will give you A. And vector BX plus BY will give you vector B. I am not saying magnitudes, right? I am just telling you <coughs> the vectors. Now, I want to find the resultant vector. So if I have to use parallelogram law, then I'll have to draw a parallelogram here. But instead, I now have decomposed a and B into X and Y components. So now look here. This vector A has two components, AX and AY. AX is in this positive X direction. What about BX? BX is also in the positive X direction. And BY is in the positive Y direction. And AY also is in positive Y direction. So obviously, AX and behave BX are in the same direction. So if we were to call the resultant vector R, then RX will be in the direction of AX plus BX. Because they are in the same direction, they will add up. And since there are no angles involved, so it'll be just Rx is equal to Ax plus Bx, right? And the direction is in the positive x direction. Similarly, Ry will have the, <coughs> will be Ay plus By, magnitude of Ay plus magnitude of By, because they are in the same direction. So, what is the <coughs> net resultant vector R? Magnitude of R will be Rx squared plus Ry squared, where we have already found. And Rx also, we already know, Ry is all we also know, so then we can get the magnitude of R. Now, what about the angle of this vector? Then theta will be tangent inverse Ry by Rx. So if we have to draw it, it'll be like this. And this will be your net resultant vector R. And this is a magnitude, this will be the direction. So <coughs> in the next uh, video, I'm going to give you an example. By the way, I'm going to make these videos short, like 15 minutes, so that, you know, I know um, you don't want to spend too much time at the time, so 15 minutes a time, so probably that's good. Watch 15 minutes, make sure you understand it, before your attention, you know, like, goes around all over the world, then uh, we'll stop the video, then come back and watch another one, all right? So see you in next video.